Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you happen to be. This is Wooten's, W-O-E-T-O-N, Interesting Stories. You know, I entered into my second marriage on a bet. The bet was with my father-in-law, or to be future father-in-law. He became my father-in-law, and the bet was that I could stay married for three years. And if I did, he was going to give us $15,000. Well, I didn't make it. I made two years, though. I thought that was pretty good. But my gambling caught up with me, and my wife just said, adios. <laughs> but now I'm on wife number three. And I was coming down the steps of the church, and there was that father-in-law, the ex-father-in-law, just <laughs> big smile on his face. And he's pointing his fingers at me, and he's saying, I told you so. Well, anyway, out of spite and determination, I was going to make this marriage last. Well, I still had gambling problems, but it, it was better. Our budget was really tight, but I had some overtime, and, and that kind of took care of my gambling losses, at least I thought it did until I got a phone message. Phone. He left a message on my phone. This is Fred. I purchased a $5,000 IOU note from your playing poker a couple months ago. And this money has got to be paid. That was it. God, my overtime wouldn't take care of that. I, I, I kind of ignored these phone calls and just let it go by and let it go by. One day my car broke down and I had to take a bus. And I got into this bus, and there was nobody hardly in the bus at all. And this old lady came in. She looked around, and then she looked right at me. And she sat right next to me. I was surprised. And then she says... You don't know me, but my husband was a gambler, and he lost $5,000 in a poker game, and he didn't pay it. Well, he's dead now. They say it was an accident, but I know it was a murder. But now I have life insurance on him, and they said someone must pay, and they want me to pay out of my life insurance on my dead husband. Do you have life insurance on your life? I kind of looked at the lady like, and then she said, oh, that's my bus stop. And she got off and left. Well, she scared the daylights out of me. I immediately went to my attorney, a friend of mine. And he said, well, don't worry. He says, <laughs> you don't need any worries at all. Actually, in this state, gambling debts can't not be collected unless they occur in a casino. This didn't occur in a casino, did it? 
I said, no, 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 it was a private poker game. Well, <laughs> no worry. I'll call him up and we'll take care of it. Then I thought to myself, this Fred guy, he, <laughs> he doesn't, you know, the law is great when both sides follow it. But when only one side follows it, I'm going to find myself right, but dead. I said, my, no, 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 don't, don't, don't call Fred. Well, I, I, I didn't know what to do. I went to work, and I could barely concentrate during work. And then I got a call at work, and it was Fred. He says, you know that park right across from you, the street where you work in that statue of uh, Sherman? Meet me there when you get off work. I was scared. I didn't know what to do. There goes my marriage. Marriage number three. Welcome marriage four. I guess. I, I don't know. I, I, I couldn't even think. Then I got a call from my attorney. And he said, you know, I, I'm sorry I couldn't help you. But, you know, I have certain ethics I have to follow. But I have a friend of mine that doesn't quite have to follow these ethics. And he owes me a favor, and, and he'll uh, take care of this thing. His name is Herb. I'm going to have him stop by and see you real quick. Well, Herb came in. Herb was kind of a strange guy, and he talked even stranger. Yeah, I can take care of this debt. When are you going to meet this Fred fellow? I, I told him about the meeting at, at the Sherman statute, and I said, I'm going to meet him there. And, uh, and he says, ah, don't worry. I'll take care of it. I'll meet him, and I'll talk to him, and you'll see. <laughs> okay. Well, I met Fred. And then I, I started to, you know, talk to Fred, and immediately Herb walked up to us and said, Fred, I'll take care of this. Jack, you stand around, but I'll take care of this. Fred said, you're going to pay this debt then? Hey, I ain't going to pay nothing. You heard of a bounty hunter? Yeah, I ain't got no judgment or anything like that after me what are you doing get, 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 give me my money wait a minute you see i'm what they call a financial bounty hunter what what kind of nonsense is that just pay me the five thousand dollars ain't gonna pay you nothing you've been paying your taxes I checked, and you haven't been. And if you don't do something quick, I'm going to call the government on you, and they'll come take care of you quick. <laughs> Fred, Fred all of a sudden got, got kind of nervous because I could sense that Fred didn't report any of this stuff. Hey guys, listen, Fred, we got a decision here, and we're going to do it real quick. You cancel that 5000 I owe you, right on there paid in full, and I'll erase all of your tax liability through 2020. 2021 are on your own. I was shocked. Fred did it. Herb handed me the IOU and listen, Jack, you're a stupid, dumb gambler. You bet on emotions, not on 
facts and figures and statistics and stuff like that that gamblers do. Oh, 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 oh. I'll never gamble again. Well, a couple weeks later, you know, it was my son's birthday. And I just, I just knew that it was going to be a lucky day. It's my son's birthday. And I, I got a call from the same people, that poker game that I played and unfortunately lost 5000 But I got a call from them and... They said there was an open seat, and this was my lucky day. I knew I could win. So I went. You know, some people never learn. Thank you.